it's Sunday morning. Welcome to Black Oak Baptist Church. Trust and pray that you've had a great week in the Lord. We're going to go ahead and get started with our worship service this morning. We're going to ask you to stand. The praise team is going to come up. And our first song is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a great song, right? Hoffman wrote that song between he was born in 1839 and died in 1929 now in our lifetime today we think we got it pretty bad right air conditioner ain't working we complain a little bit mm -hmm. water don't run we complain a little bit that last verse put it back up on the screen right what have I read you ever think about what he faced in his lifetime Amen. in his 90 years of living he didn't worry about anything. Why? Because he had an unchanging God, right? That's what we've got, an unchanging God. So let's sing it from the top of our voice this morning. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Anything, nothing. Trust me in the Lord, right? Here we go. Amen. Aren't you glad we can lean on Jesus? That's right. Amen. Amen. Are you glad to be back in church today? Amen. Thankful that the Lord watched over us and allowed us to be here. If you're visiting with us, we are glad to have you. We have got our Connect cards back that are going to be on the back table, so when we have visitors, you can fill those out, drop them in the offering box, and we want to send you a gift to let you know that we're thankful that you came. Uh, let's just worship the Lord this morning, all right? I miss church, and I tell you what, it was different last week. The sanctuary, it was completely empty. And the last time COVID hit, I at least had my wife and Pastor Lee to preach to, but this time it was just me and the camera up there and Brother Eric and Braden up there, so we're thankful for them. Can we thank them and Daniel for all they do up there? We're thankful that they're always up there working things out. Let me tell you how I want to open today's service, and then we will uh, keep singing. We have two very special prayer requests we need to pray for. Uh, Miss Shannon Cook is in UT Hospital right now with COVID. Uh, Kevin took her, I believe it was yesterday morning. She's just struggling to recover after 10 days of it, and she needs special prayer. And I told Kevin we would do that. And then Miss Sheila's brother, A.D., is on the ventilator, and he's battling COVID 
and they need special prayer. So would you join me just where you are? That's how we're going to open the service today. Would you join me in praying for a few minutes for these that are facing this? Can we do that? Father, I thank you for this time you've allowed us to come to church and Lord, just thank you for allowing us the freedom to gather together to worship you and just to lift your name on high. And Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come to this morning. And uh, Lord, we come to a time of special prayer just to lift up Miss Shannon. Uh, Lord, as she is facing COVID and she's in the hospital and uh, Lord, just needs help recovering. Lord, we lift her up to you and we pray, God, that you would touch her body and Lord, that you would breathe into her lungs, and Father, that you would just heal her. Lord, we believe, God, that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could think or ask. And Lord, we don't pray just to say words, but we pray believing that our God is able. And Lord, we lift up A.D. to you that you would just do the same for him. Lord, as uh, he's been facing this long road with uh, chemo treatments and now COVID, we pray, God, that you would just touch his body. Lord, that you would heal him. God, we believe, Lord, through Scripture and through faith that you're able to do anything and everything. And Lord, we ask now that your will would be done in these requests. Lord, I pray you'd meet with us this morning. Lord, help us to come with a heart of worship to set all formalities and everything aside. Uh, Lord, and just to unashamedly worship the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Lord, you're the reason we're here. And I pray, God, you'd bless us with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said. Amen. 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 You can be seated this morning. Follow along on the screen. I stand amazed in the presence. <clears throat> Imagine the love that God has for us, right? Amen. Praise God.
this last song we're going to sing is talk about the goodness of God. In Sunday school this morning, we talked about the nation of Israel coming out of bondage. They never fully understood the goodness that God provided for them. They never understood what a great God He was. I proclaim Him this morning. He's a great God. Listen to this beautiful song. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life. have led me through the fire and darkest night you were close like no other I've known you as a father and I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God and all my
and the heavens open up and pour out your blessings upon us. Lord, forgive us for all of our failures and shortcomings. Thank you for being a good, good father. Bless us this day, Lord. Bless Brother Matthews. He comes to preach this morning. Open up the hearts of the people. Thank you for loving us. Go with us throughout this day. All this we ask in your blessing, sweet holy name. Amen. Amen. Dismiss Jesus, kids, out the back of the door. Amen. Have you always found him faithful? Amen. Amen. I want you to take your Bibles with me to the book of Deuteronomy in chapter number 31 this morning. If you have your copy of the Word of God, Deuteronomy chapter number 30, I'm sorry, not 31. I want to preach to you with the Lord being my helper this morning on a, on a passage of Scripture that the Lord has begun to uh, deal with me this week and begin to show me that each one of us have a choice this morning to make. In the book of Deuteronomy, in the 30th chapter, where we find ourselves, uh, as you know, reading the Word of God, Brother Roger mentioned it just a second ago, that in Exodus chapter number 12 and through 14, God liberates His people from bondage in Egypt. And you'll recall with me that they come by the way of the Red Sea, the Lord parts the waters and they come across the Red Sea and uh, we find ourselves in the book of Deuteronomy taking a look into the past. You and I know that it's at the end of the book of Deuteronomy that Moses will resign his position and he'll prepare to die and Joshua will prepare to take over. But before Moses turns things over to Joshua, he uses the book of Deuteronomy to give three subjects. First, uh, through the first half quarter of the book, he reminds the people of God, the Israelites, of where God has brought them from. He reminds them that they were in bondage in Egypt and how God liberated them and delivered them. And by the way, I think sometimes it's fitting for us as the people of God to look back and see where God has brought us from. That all my life He has been faithful. There's never been a day that He wasn't there. There's never been a mountain that I faced uh, uh, that He was not there to carry me over, through, or around. It's good for us to look back and see where God's brought us from. But it's also good for us to remember Moses uh, uses the next part of Deuteronomy uh, to remind the people of, of the law of God. Uh, uh, you know we are still in the books of the law here in the Old Testament. And he reminds them of the Ten Commandments that were received on Mount Sinai and how they should live a holy life. But now we find ourselves in the uh, third and latter part of the book of Deuteronomy. And what Moses is doing here is he is reinstating the covenant that God made with his people. Preacher, why would he do that? There has never been a time that God has withdrew from his side of the covenant, but there have been a many of times that you and I have withdrew from our side of the covenant. If you'll recall uh, the Old Testament history with me, uh, you remember that they sent two spies, Joshua and Caleb, into the promised land. Uh, they went into the promised land, they came back with fruit from the promised land, and they reported to all of the people, and they said let's go do this let's overtake this land God's given it to us uh, but you remember the other people they begin to be afraid uh, and not believe the word of God God had told them I will give you the land uh, uh, that I've promised to Abraham to Isaac and Jacob uh, uh, the land where the Canaanites dwelt that land is yours but uh, they did not believe the promise of God can I tell you this morning as a side note that if you and I do not believe the promises of God we will never have victory in our lives uh, uh, they said, no, we're not going. They began to persuade the crowd that there were giants in that land. Preacher, why are you giving me the backstory? Because you need to know to know where we're at. They begin to tell the people, we can't do this. There's too many giants in that land. And uh, you'll remember what God told Moses to tell them, because of your unbelief, uh, uh, you will wander one year for one day in the wilderness. That it took them to spy out the land was 40 days. So for 40 years and 40 nights, uh, for 40 years, they uh, wandered around in the wilderness. If you'll read the Old Testament, uh, you'll see where God literally told 
told them everywhere to go. Uh, and they would go to that place and God would say, I will not give you this land. Uh, uh, there was a few that he would say, I've given this to the descendants of Lot. Uh, uh, God would not give them their own place to dwell. Because of their disobedience, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. The Bible will tell us in the book of Numbers and in the book of Deuteronomy that every person from 20 years and older had to die in the wilderness because of their unbelief. When you and I don't believe the promises of God, there's consequences. We can't expect to live in victory if we do not trust in the Lord. You remember what the psalmist said, those who trust in the Lord will rejoice. And God's made some promises to you and I. So here we are in Deuteronomy chapter number 30. The reason that Moses is reinstating the covenant that God made with his people because everybody 20 years and older has died in the wilderness. And these are the children of those people that wandered in the wilderness. Can I say this tonight or this morning just from this standpoint before I get into the text? Your disobedience will affect other people than just you. Because of the choices that those parents made, their children wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. But I I, I like what I find, and and I believe it's in the book of Deuteronomy, that uh, God would tell those, Moses would remind those people that they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, but their clothes had not worn. Their shoes had not worn. Because God had different plans for them, they would inherit the promised land. Stand with me, if you will, as you're able. In Deuteronomy chapter number 30, Moses reinstates the covenant with the people of God. But then he gives them a charge their self. In Deuteronomy chapter number 30, verse 11, we'll begin reading. The Bible said, For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. Moses said, See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish. And that shall not prolong your days unto the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou, listen what he says, thou and thy seed, may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of the days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, I thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for the time of singing, Lord, that we can look back that all of our lives you have been faithful. Lord, thank you for this time to come to open the word of God and to break the bread of life. Lord, I believe the most important time of a service that you said by the foolishness of preaching you would confound the wise. And Lord, I pray that you would come and Lord, that you would enlighten our hearts and our understanding as we look at your word. God, I pray that you would dissect our hearts with the word of God that we may leave here a different people than when we came. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to realize that we have a decision today to choose between life and death, between good and evil. And Lord, I pray, God, that you'd help us this morning. Lord, I pray that you'd bind every demon of hell from this place as we look at your word. And Lord, I pray you'd come and preach to us. I don't have the ability to do it without you. 
Lord, I pray you'd come and we'd give you the honor and glory for it. Hide us behind the cross. In Jesus' name I pray you can be seated. We find ourselves here in Deuteronomy chapter number 29 is where Moses will reinstate God's covenant with the people. Uh, He will remind them of uh, the covenant that God has made with them that if they would obey him that he would lead them unto a land that flows with milk and honey. That he would lead them unto the promised land uh, uh, that they have looked forward to. But he began to remind them that if they would not keep their side of the covenant that they would not uh, inherit the promised land. Can I say for you and I it's true today. Uh, It's the same. Maybe our promised land is not a physical dwelling place on earth uh, uh, but Jesus has promised that he goes to prepare a place for us uh, and the only way that you and I can get there uh, is by the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the bridge. Moses is reinstating the covenant with God's people. He is reminding them uh, in the book of Deuteronomy if you'll just flip through it and read. uh, uh, He speaks there of a blessing and of a curse Uh, and you read through the book of Deuteronomy and you'll see that that blessing brother Roger uh, was that promised lamb that they could inherit uh, uh, that they never have to work for anything uh, uh, that everything they needed was right there uh, uh, that it was better than they could ever imagine but uh, Moses begins to remind the people can I tell you today that uh, Moses was not a a soft spoken uh, man of God he told it like it was uh, and he told the people of God that if they disobeyed God that there would be consequences that there would be a curse that would fall on them uh, and that curse is that they would not inherit the promised land uh, uh, that they would begin to come under great sorrow and great attack uh, uh, that they would have to travel through the wilderness Uh, uh, can I ask you a question this morning would you rather live in the presence of God all of your days or would you rather wander in the wilderness Uh, uh, the choice is up to us today Uh, uh, David said I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord uh, than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Uh, uh, You and I have a decision of the people of God uh, uh, that if we're going to live according to the covenant of God, if we're going to live according to how he says to live, uh, or if we're just going to go about it our way and waste our life. Preacher, this ain't a popular message, I know, but it's what he gave me. Moses reinstates the contract and uh, the the covenant in Deuteronomy 29. Uh, And then in the beginning of Deuteronomy 30, in the uh, first 10 verses, he encourages the people of God that they need to return uh, unto the Lord. I I can recall in my mind, uh, as Moses would charge the parents of these people in the book of Exodus with the same thing. You remember he came down from Mount Sinai and Aaron had made the molten calf uh, and they were worshiping it there, not knowing what become of Moses. Moses uh, and Moses come up to the camp and he was pretty mad uh, and he took that calf and he put it in the fire uh, and he made ashes out of it he put it in their water and he made them drink it with a straw that's in the Bible Uh, he was mad about their disobedience to God Uh, uh, there was consequences do you remember what he said Uh, he said choose you this day who you're going to serve he said all that are on the Lord's side I want you to come over here Uh, and the people that were on the Lord's side came to Moses Uh, and listen to me this morning every person that did not declare uh, uh, that they were on the Lord's side. Uh, uh, Moses commanded the Levite priest to take their swords uh, and to kill every one of them. Uh, I'm just telling you on the authority of God's word today uh, uh, that there are consequences uh, for disobedience. We see that all throughout the Bible. Moses here in verse number 11 of our text begins uh, to command the people. He said, this commandment is not far from you. He said, you know what this commandment is. They uh, were no strangers of being around the things of God. uh, And you and I are not either. And he begins to go on and says that, he said, it's not up in heaven that we should say, who's going to go into heaven and get that commandment for us? Uh, It's not across the sea that we must say, uh, who's going to go across the sea and get that commandment for us Uh, uh, but he said it's nigh unto thee in verse 14 Uh, he said it's in your mouth and in your heart Uh, uh, you'll recall that Paul later quotes this uh, in the book of Romans where he said it's nigh unto you uh, even in your mouth Uh, uh, preacher what do those verses mean it means that you and I are not ignorant of what God's word says Uh, uh, we're not ignorant of what Jesus commanded us uh, uh, to love the Lord our God with all of our hearts and all of our soul and all of our strength 
truth uh, and to love our neighbor as ourself. Uh, uh, Moses is warning the people here that there will be consequences uh, uh, just as it was for their parents uh, if they did not obey God. Uh, uh, we'll be encouraged to know that they will later uh, go through Jericho and cross the Jordan River and they will inherit the promised land uh, and they'll divide it between them. Uh, uh, Joshua and Joshua chapter 8 uh, uh, begins to remind these people of God of the same consequences uh, all throughout my Bible it's a theme that God would warn us uh, uh, that we are to live justly to walk humbly and to love our God uh, uh, the moment that you and I begin to stray things will begin to get dangerous uh, and Moses was showing that he was pleading with the people of God uh, just to stay with it do you remember that Moses is the reason that the Israelites were not destroyed he went back up on Mount Sinai that day and he went into the presence of God again. Uh, and God told Moses, he said, leave me alone that my anger may wax hot against them. Uh, and Moses began to plead for the people. Uh, and he even went so far uh, uh, to say, Lord, if you won't spare them, blot my name out of the book. Uh, and Moses was pleading for the Israelites. Uh, and the Bible said that God repented of his anger uh, that he meant to do unto them. Uh, uh, the Psalm would later tell us uh, had not Moses stood in the breach uh, all of Israel would have been destroyed uh, and I'm just curious this morning at Black Oak Baptist Church uh, who it's going to be that will stand up uh, and that will say I'll stick with the stuff uh, I'm not going to give up I won't live a disobedient life uh, but I will stand in the gap we live in a fallen world and the last thing this world needs is Christians who says they're Christians but live like a junkyard dog Monday through Saturday. I'm not saying that you, but I'm saying we ought to examine ourselves, as Moses told the people, to see if we're living a life that measures up. He tells them you don't have to go find this commandment. It's nigh unto you. It's, it's at your doors. You know what the Bible says. And look in verse 15, this is where I want to draw our text and preach for a few minutes and I'll take my seat. He said, see, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Moses tells the people, I've set before you a choice, life and good or death and evil. He tells them that a choice must be made. The same is true for you and I this morning. As a 14-year-old boy, September 9, 2011, in the back pew of a church in Kingston, Tennessee, uh, the Lord came by my way, and if I was putting in Moses' words, the Lord would say, I've set before thee a choice, Matthew, life or death. And it's up to you to accept it. And it was in that moment that I accepted Christ as my Savior and said, I'm going to choose life. If you'll recall in the book of Jeremiah, in the 21st chapter, uh, uh, the Judah's king in that chapter was, will begin to plead for the people uh, that God would protect them and God does not hear that prayer uh, uh, but it's in this passage of scripture that Nebuchadnezzar would come uh, and all of Babylon would overtake Judah and would overtake the kingdoms of Israel and in verse number 8 of Jeremiah 21 the Bible said and unto this people thou shalt say God was telling Jeremiah I want you to tell these people this uh, uh, behold I've set before you the way of life and the way of death can I tell you the only way of life is to obey God uh, in this specific passage uh, uh, there was those that would stay uh, and that they would try to fight uh, and they would try to endure things out but God said if you do that you're going to die he said the only way that you'll have life uh, is to fall into the hand of the Chaldeans and go into bondage uh, uh, can I tell you if we don't obey God there is no life I know this isn't the message you're thinking to preach right before you vote but I just do what God tells me to do. You know how I know it's a reason that if we don't obey God, there's consequences. In the book of Numbers, chapter number 14, when Moses came to those people and he said, because of your disobedience, uh, uh, you're going to wander for 40 years in the wilderness. They began to get sorrowful and they began to panic. Uh, and some of those big men stood up uh, and they said, uh-uh, not me. And they took their swords uh, and they went running toward the promised land. Uh, and they said, now we'll inherit what God has for us. Uh, and Moses said, no, 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 no. God will not be with you. Uh, 
uh, because you did not obey him. Uh, and they took them swords. They ran into the promised land. Every single one of them died. Why? Because they disobeyed God. Listen, listen to me. There's promises today. I want you to get this. There's promises today that God has made to us. If we don't lay hold on them, we may never have another opportunity. Those people that day, if they would have said, okay, Joshua, okay, Caleb, we've got faith in the Lord. Let's go into the promised land. Let's inherit what God's had for us. They would have laid hold on the promise. But they didn't. And Moses said, now that you've disobeyed God, the promise is no longer there. There are things today that God has for us to do. And if we don't do them, there may never be another opportunity, Brother Roger. There may be a, never be another opportunity to reach that person at the gas station. There may never be another opportunity to reach that family member uh, that's still sitting at home while you're in church. There are things today uh, uh, that God wants us to do that we need to be obedient and we need to do or there'll be consequences. I'm just preaching to you the Bible this morning. Jeremiah had the same thing. It's life. Or it's death. Had the people that day as they walked up on uh, Jericho said, we ain't doing it. It's life or it's death. They walked up on the Jordan River. It's life or it's death. There are decisions that must be made. Look in verse number 16 of our text. The Bible said, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply and the Lord God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. What's the way, preacher, for life? What's the way uh, is to obey God? Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter number 6 and verse number 5, Moses would say, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Uh, uh, wait a minute, preacher, that sounds for familiar. Uh, uh, Jesus said in Matthew 22 and verse number 37, uh, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. He said the first commandment uh, is the great commandment and the second is like unto it, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus was quoting the book of Deuteronomy and he's saying today that the only way to live is to obey God. It would, this was a very vital message for the people and the process that they were going into. It was a very vital message for Moses to remind them the covenant that God had made uh, and that they would have some dark days ahead, uh, uh, that they would have more challenges to face than just the Red Sea, uh, uh, that there would be cities that they would have to conquer, there would be rivers that they would have to cross. Uh, uh, but what, listen to me this morning, what Moses was telling the people is God is going to keep his side of the covenant if you'll just keep your side of the covenant and obey, you'll see God do great things. Can I tell you this morning, if we will be a people that will believe the Lord and trust in Him and obey Him, we will see Him do great and mighty things, which we know not. The Israelites needed to know before they got to Jericho, before they got to Jordan, and they needed to be reminded before they got to the promised land that they didn't get there on their own. And the only way they made it was because God made a way. Uh, uh, can I tell you the only way you and I'll make it to our promised land one day uh, is because God has made a way. But there's only one way. And that's to be obedient. There's only one way for the, the children of God to live here and that's to obey God. That's to love God. That's to do what he says. Look in verse number 19. I want you to see this. That Moses said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That's pretty serious, ain't it? Moses is calling that heaven and earth would record their decision that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live forever. That verse 20, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. What's that next part say? For he is thy life. Can I tell you this morning that we have a decision to make? To obey God or to not obey God? But when I read this passage of Scripture, I, I, 
I, it, just in my spiritual eyes, I don't see a decision. I see a decision that I have to obey God as a child of God, that I have to choose good or evil. I've already chose life, and I won't uh, die for all of eternity because of what Jesus has done. But And I know as a child of God that I must choose good and not evil. But when I read this passage of Scripture, uh, uh, the Lord begins to show me that today there is a choice uh, for a lost person between life and death, between getting on the boat and living or staying behind. Uh, uh, can I tell you this morning that Jesus is the only way to eternal life? Uh, if we could take this passage of Scripture and put it into today, Jesus would be saying what he said in John 14. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Uh, uh, there are people all around us today, maybe here, uh, uh, that are trying to make it on your own dime. Uh, uh, you're trying to ride in on Papa's coattail. Uh, uh, but the only way to be saved, what did Jesus tell Nicodemus, Rocky? Uh, uh, thou must be born again. I, I see a more crucial decision uh, uh, than life or death and good or evil uh, uh, for the Old Testament people. Uh, I, I see a spiritual decision that has to be made uh, uh, that you and I have to choose to live uh, and to trust Christ uh, or to deny Christ and to die for all of eternity. Preacher, how, how do you know that's true? In Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 13, Jesus said it was. He said, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be in which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. And few be there that find it. Uh, I just came to tell you this morning uh, that this world is falling apart. Uh, uh, that there are no more things that I'm looking for to be fulfilled. Uh, I'm just listening for a trumpet, Brother Raji. Uh, brother, I just said your names together. Brother Raji, Brother Rocky, I'm listening for a trumpet because there's coming a day that the Lord will come again or there's coming a day that every one of us will die. And please hear me this morning. I can feel all of hell trying to fight me tell you this, that there are decisions that have to be made today whether you say I'm going to choose life and I'm going to live and I'm going to believe what God said. I'm going to trust that He is God's Son. I may not understand it all, but I choose choose to believe by faith that he is the Messiah, he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. Or you're going to say, I choose uh, to deny that Jesus is Lord. Uh, I don't need him. I don't want anything to do with him. And you will suffer the consequences. Y'all turn me up just a little bit, please. I know I've never asked that before. I'm losing my voice. There's a choice that must be made. And it's no light decision. That we must say yes to Jesus. I, I wish I could communicate this in a better way, but there's only one life. And listen to me, people will tell you today you got tomorrow. You say, preacher, I, I'll, I'll deal with it tonight. I'll deal with it when I get home. You may never have another opportunity. Jesus said, to, Paul said, today is the day of salvation. When I was sitting in the back pew of a church for weeks on end, I kept telling Jesus I didn't need him. For weeks on end, the Holy Spirit would come by and he would knock on my heart. And I would say, nope, not today. I don't need it. I'm doing just fine all by myself. And I, I remember that I would squeeze that pew as hard as I could in front of me. And I remember September 9th, 2011, uh, probably around noon, uh, that the preacher gave an invitation. And the Holy Ghost got up in my lap so strong. Uh, and he said, boy, I've been trying to save you for weeks now. Uh, and if you deny me today, I will never, ever give you another opportunity uh, to be saved God said to me today is the day of salvation that you say yes to me and that you choose life uh, or that you say no to me uh, and you choose death for all of eternity uh, uh, you're talking about the fear of God coming all over you uh, and the preacher gave that invitation I didn't wait brother I, I didn't give it any time uh, I went forward to that altar and I said yes to Jesus uh, and that's the only way to have life I remember hearing a story of a famous evangelist and 
Many of us have heard this story, and I've heard several preachers use it, that one night he was given an invitation, he was preaching, and the altars were so full. Wouldn't it be good to see that in our day? Uh, uh, the altars were so full that he couldn't even leave the stage. Uh, uh, and the story will say that he got up on the pews, uh, and he began to step over the pews uh, uh, to get to this young lady that God had showed him. Uh, and he went back there, and he said, Young lady, would you be saved? Uh, and she said, No, I don't need it not today uh, I'm doing fine and he began to plead with her uh, oh, will you be saved you may never have another opportunity uh, and she said no her, her parents were safe they got in the car uh, got about a mile down the road where they lived made a turn uh, and a drunk driver hit the car uh, and they trying to get out of the car but she was trapped uh, and mom and dad got out uh, uh, they called 911 and they were uh, coming to get her out but before they could uh, uh, there was a guy gasoline leak in that car went up in flames uh, and mom and dad got up next to that car uh, and they began to plead to that little girl uh, honey ask Jesus to save you right now uh, you better do it they, they knew that she didn't have hope uh, and she said mama I can't get saved uh, I told Jesus no back there uh, and he's not knocking on my heart anymore uh, I don't tell you that to scare you uh, uh, but I just tell you to tell you that life is brief uh, uh, there is brevity in life uh, and you must choose today uh, uh, this morning in Black Oak Baptist Church uh, uh, whether you're going to choose life uh, and live for God or whether you're going to choose death. <clears throat> My Bible don't tell me that I've got a second chance. Salvation if I deny Christ and die and go to hell. There is no way out. It's not preached in our churches anymore today, but Jesus spoke more on it than he ever did on the kingdom of heaven because he was warning people that hell is a real place. You see, the people of God in Exodus or Deuteronomy 30, they made a decision that we're going to obey God in this life. They, God had already made a covenant with them. Uh, they were already sealed in, uh, but they made a decision, I'm going to serve God in this life, but it's more serious of a decision that you and I must make that if we are going to accept Christ and live for all of eternity. If I ask you the question today, I don't want you to answer it out loud. But if you died right now, do you say, preacher, I know that I know that I know that heaven is my home? Or would you say, preacher, I, I've got some doubt about that. I don't know that I'm on that narrow way that leads to life. I don't know that I've chosen life. Jesus said that was the entire reason that he came in the gospel of John. In chapter number 5, there is a way to ensure that we can have life. Jesus said these words, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is past uh, from death to life. Can I tell you that I've heard people say uh, uh, when somebody gets saved that they go from being a bad person to a good person. Uh, uh, but that ain't what happened to me, Brother Jack. When I got saved, I went from being dead uh, uh, to being alive. Uh, I went from having no hope to having hope. Can some of you agree with me this morning uh, uh, that when Jesus moved in and hell moved out, everything changed. Uh, and we chose that we would pick life. You see, I don't believe in any Calvin, Calvinistic gospel. Jesus is willing to save whoever, wherever, and whenever. The Bible, the Bible would, my Bible would say, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. My Bible would tell me Jesus said uh, uh, that no man could come unto him unless the Father would draw him. Uh, uh, but the Bible would begin to explain that every person would have at least one opportunity to be saved. You say, preacher, I've done too many bad things. I've messed up too many times for Jesus to save me. Uh, he didn't come for the people who I think they have it all together. Uh, he said, I came not for the righteous, but uh, for the sick. He said, I came for those that need me. Uh, he said, the righteous need not repentance, uh, uh, but the sick need a physician. Uh, uh, you remember what John the Baptist would step on the stage uh, and what he would begin to proclaim as Christ would begin to come. Uh, he would begin to proclaim, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand can I tell you I believe now in my life more than I ever have before 
that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What if today could be the dawning of that grand and glorious day? You say, preacher, I know if Jesus came right now that I'm going to heaven. I, I listen to me. Don't let the devil come in and make you t tune out right now. I'm just telling you what the Bible said. You say, preacher, I know that I'd be going to heaven. If not, Jesus has came today for today to be the day of salvation. You see, there's coming an end to all of this, all of life as we know it. And we don't know when it'll come. As we preached two Wednesday nights ago in the book of Acts, it's not for us to know the times and the seasons of the Father. It's just for us to be ready. And I've been praying lately and saying, Lord, we've not seen anybody saved in a while. And the Lord began to show me that he was doing a work of revival here at that point. But as I got alone with God this week and he began to tell me that there was someone that needed to hear for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Can I tell you the redemptive story of the Bible is that heaven gave everything it had just so that we could be saved. Heaven didn't give just a little bit. It gave all that it had uh, so that you and I could be saved today. Brother Rocky's coming to the piano for me. I'm coming to a close this morning. I ask you a simple question. Are you saved? I, I wouldn't be doing what God's called, called me to do if I got up here every week and I only preached encouraging messages to you. But there's a time where we have to look. And I ask you the question, maybe today's that time. Are you born again? Do you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that Jesus has saved you? If that's you, would you raise your hand? Preacher, I know I'm going to heaven. Praise the Lord, we've got hope. I want you to pray. God gave me this message for a reason. And there's somebody today under the sound of my voice or on Facebook, on live, that needs to be saved. And you remember how that day changed everything in your life. Best day of my life, the day that Jesus saved me, rescued me from hell. But dear lost person, today is the day because you may never be promised another opportunity. Every head bowed, every eye closed across the church this morning. No one looking around, no one moving. Are you saved? Is Jesus the Lord of your life? You say, preacher, I'm not sure. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter number 10, the qualifications to be saved. Paul said in Romans chapter number 10, that if thou shalt believe in thine heart, that Jesus died for you and that God rose him again on the third day, thou shalt be saved. You've got to know that you're lost. You've got to say, preacher, I know that I'm not saved. I know that heaven is my home. Preacher, what must I do if I, I believe that Jesus died for me? I believe that he rose again. I believe that he's coming again. What must I do? Cry out from your heart. Confess to the Lord that you are a sinner. And ask him to save your soul. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Father, I thank you for this time to share in your word. And Lord, I believe that you gave me this for a reason. Lord, it's not my job to work in the invitation time. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would come into this place. Lord, would begin to move in our hearts. And Lord, I pray for that person that needs to choose life today over death. God, I pray that you'd give them the faith to come or right there where they're sitting to confess Christ as their Lord, to believe on you and to be saved. Lord, I pray for that Christian today that's maybe in the shoes that the people of God were in Deuteronomy 30, that we need to choose that we're going to quit dabbling in sin and that we're going to choose life and righteousness to live for you. Lord, I don't know what you need to do in this invitation time, but God, I pray you do it. Prayed by the enemy in Jesus' name, I pray. As we stand to our feet, Brother Roger begins to sing. If you need to come, I'm going to ask you to come this morning, whatever your need may be.
get a cup. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and praise. Through death into life everlasting, he passed and Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the see you this morning. Let me give you a few announcements and then I will leave the sanctuary and let Brother Audra come up here and lead you in the next part of the service. Um, is the WOM meeting still going to be on this Tuesday at 630? If you can come to that. Um, continue to pray for Michelle's mom. She still needs prayer, Brother Daniel. Is that correct? She took a turn for the worse uh, a little while ago, so just continue to pray for her and um, continue also to just to pray for Shannon and for A.D. I want to encourage you tonight to, to be back here. The Lord's put on my heart something different to do for service, um, not something drastically different, but I want to challenge you to be here because we're going to have a special time of prayer, and I just believe we all need to be here for that. Um, the youth tonight... The youth will have a guest speaker tonight. I'm not going to tell you who, but young people, you be here uh, to listen to that speaker. And then the choices resource thing that Miss Cheyenne mentioned to us a few weeks ago um, that they've put on if you've had an abortion and you're struggling with making it through that, you don't have to tell anyone it ends Tuesday, right? The sign up for that, or does it start Tuesday? You have till Tuesday to sign up, so... You can see Ms. Cheyenne in confidence, or you can call Choices Resource Center, and we'll get you started on that path, just if that's something that you need to do. Anybody have anything on your heart? Okay. Let's remember that. What night is that? Saturday, what time? We'll, okay. Saturday night, uh, this Saturday night, there's going to be a worship night in downtown Clinton that the Clinton Baptist Association is putting on just to try to be an encouragement in the midst of this time. If that's something you're interested in, see Jessica after service. Um, grab somebody so we can give you more information on that. We are participating in that, I believe. Um, so you just be praying about that. Let me say this before I leave any and every service. If God's dealing with your heart, don't leave. You find me, I'm one of the last ones to leave. Find 
Brother Roger, find Jamie or Kayla, grab somebody. Let somebody talk with you. Let somebody pray with you, okay? I know the live people won't be able to hear him, but Brother Zach, will you close us in prayer, then I'll leave. Brother Roger, you come and you take care of that.